to the hospital a few weeks before daddy passed away daddy said son I want to talk to you he said first thing I want you to know is I'm proud of you he said you carried me all over the country if I needed some water, you were there. If I needed some food, you were there. He said, I'm proud of you. He said, as long as you live, I'll never die. He said, you walk like me, you act like me, you look like me. He said, but I got want something I want you to do. I said, what is that, Daddy? This is what Daddy told me. He said, son, I'm depending on you. Get your family through. I'm depending on you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another worship service of the Ninth Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, welcome to our church members and to our online friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this day. This is the Lord's Day. This is the day that the Lord 
hath made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, in spite of uh, what the weather forecast is, uh, God's word must still go forward. So at this time, we're going to have uh, our deacons to assist us in uh, conducting the devotional period. And then uh, thereafter, uh, we will uh, continue on with the rest of our program. morning. I will be reading from Meshach 6 and 8. He hath sold thee, O man, what is good, and what do the Lord require of, of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. God have blessed on the reader and the doer of his word. Our Father, Our Father God. which art in heaven, yes, sir. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, yes, Lord. thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, sir. Give us these days our daily bread, yes, Lord. and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Yes, Lord. Master, lead us not into no temptation, oh, Lord. but deliver us from evil. Surely, Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, I come forward to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master, for last night rest. Yes, yes Lord. Thank you, Master, for watching over us all night last night. Yes, Lord. And early this morning, Father, you woke us up and enabled us to see another day. Yes, Lord. Lord. A day that no man has seen before, Father. That's it. Thank you for health, life, and strength. Please. Yes, sir. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Continue giving us the strength to do your will. Please, Lord. Let your will be done. Father, we need you, and we can't make it without you. Oh, Lord. Father, you've been so good, and you've been so kind. Yes, yes. Father, you've been better to us than we've been to our own self. Yes, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the, the clothes on our back and the shoes yeah, yeah, you yeah. put on our feet, Father. Yes, thank you yes. for another day. Yeah. A day, a day, Father, that will fill with love and joy and happiness. Yeah, yeah. Bless somebody right now, Father. Yeah. We need you, and we can't make it without you. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Father, it's getting rough in this world right now, Father. Yeah. But, Father, we call it dependent upon your name that everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Father, I'm dependent upon you, Father. I need you right now, Father. Yes, Lord. The road is rough sometimes, Father. Yes. Hills are hard to climb, Father. Yes, but, Father, I just say you thank you. Right yeah. wrong. Father, go into the hospital and, uh, right now, Father. You know, Bless the sick right you're now. Trying to do right. Touch them and guide them, Father. Hold them in the palm of your hand. Let them know you're a doctor that never lost a patient. Father, we need you, Jesus. Father, we love you. Who is his master? Look upon the pastor, Father. Bless him and his family. Father, give him a word, Father. They may touch somebody. Somebody may cry, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Yes, Oh, gracious master, send peace, Father. Put your powerful hand upon this world, Father. Suffer with the coronavirus, Father. Father, with all the killing that's going on, Father, we need you right now. I got a chance. And, Father, we can't make it without you. Father, bless us, Father. Bless my family. Bless my wife. Bless my children, Father. Father, bless every child of God. Bless our children. Give us the love. Give us the understanding. Give us the strength to continue to move forward. It's hard sometimes, Father. Father, we don't know which way to turn. Sometimes. But Father, I just want to say thank you for being my side. Thank you for God. He became very rich. Father, traveled all over the world. Father, with you in the plan for everything will be all right. And I just want to say thank you. Somewhere along the way, for being who you are. The big crowd. Thank you for saving the rest. And the fans of club. Thank you, Father, for the strength you have given me. Father, get rough at times. He time. got on Father, drugs. Thank you, Lord. Father, you've been so good. Arms. So good. Father, and, uh, without you, Father, where would we be? He became very sick. Richard, Master, if there's anything so I missed, Father, 
And your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And uh, one evening, lying down in a hospital bed, an old lady came by. I said, Son, I was out here visiting her, and I heard about you. She came in the room and told him, You look like you come from a good family. Do you remember the town? Amen, 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 amen. Yeah. Thank God for that powerful devotion. Yeah. Thank God for uh, Deacon Sterling Coleman and Deacon yeah. James Ben who led us in devotion on, on today. At this time, we're ready to uh, hear announcements uh, from Sister Christy Anderson. Announcements. Please invite your family friends, co-workers, etc., to join us online on Sundays at 1045 a.m. and Thursday at 6 p.m. Each night Baptist church member is asked to pray every day at noon for our families, church disciples, members, pastors, all sick and shut in, essential workers, etc. The Holy Bible says believers are ceasing. All in-person church activities are canceled until further notice due to COVID-19 coronavirus. Again, thanks for your patience with us as we adapt to the electronic worship format. Please call the church office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. if you have any questions or concerns or need any assistance. On Friday, June 5, 2020, the Night Baptist Church Food Bank Ministry distributed approximately 380 gallons of milk on a first-come, first-served basis. Our next day to distribute milk, milk will be on June 19, 2020, if it's still available. Adults who would like to receive gallons of milk are automatically eligible. Next distribution date and time, 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Friday, June 19, 2020. The NBC Food Bank distribution is set for Saturday, June 13, 2020, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The Lord's Supper and face masks will be distributed on Saturday from noon to 2 p.m. at Night Baptist Church. This concludes the announcement period. We welcome our church members online, the viewers and supporters from Louisiana, Texas, Alabama, New Jersey, New York, other U.S. states and foreign countries. Remember, God loves you, and I love you too. Stay safe. As you get ready for the uh, the offertory uh, period, just before we uh, go into that, I do want to acknowledge that we have uh, a fifth person who has uh, joined uh, our church, and certainly we want to uh, welcome uh, Sister Felicia Thomas. She's also a part of the Thomas family. Uh, some of the members have uh, joined uh, prior to now, and those are the uh, another niece of Sister Ella Mae Skinner. Uh, we heard from uh, Pam and uh, Denise and uh, Tresha, and uh, we also have a candidate for baptism, uh, Jeremiah Lede. So we thank God that the ministry uh, that he has given to us continues to go forward. Uh, and that's what we're supposed to do, continue on with the word of God. So I'm so delighted to uh, say welcome to uh, Sister Thomas and to all those who have joined. I think this is uh, our uh, sixth uh, person, sixth person that uh, has joined uh, during this pandemic time. So uh, we thank God for her and we look forward to uh, meeting her and all of those who have joined. Uh, we look forward to uh, welcoming you uh, in person to the Ninth Baptist Church, but we want to say welcome and how delighted we are that you would join us. 
Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, also say thank you and a big uh, note of congratulations uh, to the Ninth Baptist Church uh, Food Bank Ministry for, for that distribution, for doing such an excellent job yeah. in ministering to the uh, Evangeline Parish and Bill Platt uh, communities. Uh, thank God for you and your dedication. And uh, we look forward to this coming Saturday uh, where you will be issuing uh, food as we normally do the normal distribution date for, for the normal uh, customers, I will say, uh, or recipients of the Ninth Baptist Church's uh, food bank ministry. Also, uh, we want to uh, ask that you would just continue to keep in prayer all of our uh, church members, those who are sick and shut in, and not just them, but to all church members, let's continue to uh, keep them in prayer. So this time we get ready for uh, giving. We'll give you a few uh, uh, moments to do that. We certainly appreciate uh, those of you who have just risen to the occasion, those of you who are, are sincere and serious about uh, the business of giving, those of you who believe what the scripture says, that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Those of you who realize that you can't out be uh, you can't out give God. That's you right. can't be God giving. And so we thank you for, for what you are doing and have done and will continue to do. And may God bless and keep each and every one of you. We're going to uh, give you a few moments uh, as we have uh, music. And then after that, we will have the blessing of the offering and then we'll be ready to move on to the next segment of our program this morning. Yes. We want to take a little time out and just let the Lord know how thankful we are. So many times we go to and beg, but why I'm seated today, we want to just let the Lord know that we thank you. Come on. Put your hands together. Everybody do this. Clap your hands. Come on. Sopranos.
Greetings in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus to, all, to the Night Baptist Church family and to all our online friends. We have arrived at the moment of giving. <clears throat> there are many, many different ways we give here at the Night Baptist Church. You can choose to give through Give the Fly or you can choose the Cash App. Amen. We thank you for your blessings and your donations and your gift and your faithful gifts that you have shown in the past couple of months and weeks because the work of the kingdom has to go on and we just thank you. Really? So let us pray at this moment. Give and it shall be given unto you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you look upon those that gave, had a desire to give, didn't have anything to give. We ask that you let this money be used and advance to the kingdom of our Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus, and in the powerful name of Jesus. We praise you, we thank you, and we love you dearly. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now we've come to the uh, part of the service where yes. we uh, will say what God has given us to say yes, on this particular Sunday. God has a word for uh, his people. God has a word for uh, this nation. God has yes. a word for this state and this city and this parish. God has a word for this church. God has a word for each and every one of us. Yes, sir. And I'm so glad that you are uh, in tune to the word of God that we will share with you on this day. I would ask that you would turn with me to the book of Micah, Micah chapter number six, Micah chapter six, and want you to uh, go to verse number eight, Micah chapter six and verse eight, and hopefully uh, you can also see it on the screen. I encourage you to, to look deeper deeper more deeply into this uh chapter and this uh in this book this writing that that god has given to uh micah and in turn he has given to us uh today so that you can get a richer and a truer meaning of what we're trying to share with you uh in this message micah chapter 6 uh verse number 8 and there you will find these words uh he hath shown thee O man what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? I would ask that you would uh, repeat the, the thought for today uh, as you, wherever you are, that you would uh, repeat the thought for today's uh, topic, for today's uh, sermon, for this, this particular uh, passage of scripture. I want to talk about God's requirement, God's requirement. Uh, God has some requirements uh, that he that he's listed all throughout the scripture. And today we want to, to focus in on uh, the requirement that is mentioned in Micah chapter six and verse number eight. Uh, may God bless you. And may he. Uh, open our uh, ears and our hearts and, so that we might fully understand the word of God. <clears throat> God's requirement, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. If you've ever, if you have been watching the news lately, then you should agree with me that there are too many people that are not in line with God and his word. Our nation has not only been sickened by the coronavirus, but also our nation is infected by sin. Yes, sir. And most recently it has shown itself uh, in the form of injustice, in That's the form right. of racism, in the form of murder of, uh, of an innocent person. 
The prophet Micah was assigned by God to preach to the southern kingdom of Judah. And the, and the prophet was God's mouthpiece back then. Yeah. Uh, very similar to uh, what the preacher is today uh, as God's mouthpiece. And, and, and the prophet communicated God's word to his chosen people. All right. And the Hebrew nation, Hebrew nation, God's chosen people had drifted, they had wandered, they had they they had slid away from God. Very similar to what you see in our nation today. That's right. So so God sent Micah. He sent right. Micah. He sent a prophet. He sent a man of God to to shock and to challenge the spiritual and social conscience of the nation. All right. In Micah's day, there were many folks who proclaimed their love for God. Yes. Yet uh, they had uh, hatred in their hearts. They 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 had they had sin in their heart. They yes. had disobedience uh, in their hearts. Yes. Uh, they had idolatry in their hearts. Not uh, too different than what we are seeing, hearing, and experiencing today in this world. That's right. Today, the United States has people all over the world, who, uh, all over the country, rather, who claim that they love God. Yes. And, and they declare very proudly that this is a Christian nation. Yes. And all of those are good words, but but uh, it's not uh, what you say, but it's it's what you really do that's behind what you say. And so and so, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, the, the 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 words, the deeds, the actions that we often see in our nation, uh, in our state, in our in, in our area, often are different from the words that are being spoken. Yes. They are empty words uh, because the words and the deeds uh, don't match one another. So 1 John 4, chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says, If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, the Bible says he is a liar. Whoa. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? All right. How in the world? How, how, how is it possible that you can love God, but That's you right. cannot love uh, your fellow human being? That's the word. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, you're fooling yourself, but you're not fooling God. No. Uh, you may fool some other people, but you, you're not fooling God. And God is the one who is the judge. How can you love a God whom you've never seen, never. but you hate your fellow man whom you are with every day? The purpose of today's message is to remind us that God requires every human being That's right. of some things. There are some requirements for every one of us. Right. And, and it's also uh, the purpose of this message is to declare that there ought to be a difference That's right. between the people of God and the people of this sinful world. That's right. uh, that, there ought to be some, some distinction that, that, right. that can be made. It, it ought not be that everybody is thought to, to believe and to to, to act in the same way. There ought to be something that stands out yes. because you are a child of God. That's right. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, you ought to let your light shine. So that brings me to my first point uh, right quickly. I see uh, the demonstration. Uh, Micah's days. In Micah's days, God had put his people on trial because of their evil and wicked ways. That's right. Uh, God's chosen people uh, had chosen evil over good. They had chosen wrong over right. They had chosen darkness over the light. That's right. and, and God had already done so many miraculous things for the Israelite people, the Hebrew people. Uh, the, the, uh, yet uh, they are now on trial for spiritual desertion. Uh, God had taken them out of the Egyptian slavery. He had rescued them from evil Pharaoh. He had crossed them over the dangerous Red Sea. And he crossed them over, uh, uh, not in a boat, but he crossed them over on dry land. Brought them up. And, and, and he had done so many other wonderful things uh, for them in their lives. And yet, they turned away from God at every opportunity. Look out, look out. Who else but God could subpoena the hills and the mountains and the foundations of this earth to, to serve uh, on the jury 
uh, as, as is mentioned in Micah chapter one, uh, verses one and two, he, he put the, the mountains and the foundation and the hills uh, on a jury to judge uh, Israel and their actions. My, my, my. In this text, it is revealed that the almighty God has demonstrated and illustrated enough for all of creation to know that God is a great God. Yes. And he's worthy of all praises. Uh, God has already shown us uh, what good is. And, and, right. and, 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 and we know that God is a good God. We thank right. God for, for him being the kind of God that, that he is. With all that God has revealed and all that God has released unto us and to mankind, we ought to know what is good by now. God is saying, you already know, you've been told, you, you have heard the word, you have heard uh, what, uh, what thus saith the Lord, and, and, and so you know what good is. Yes, sir. Uh, God's record is very clear, and no one should ever doubt or question what good is. Yes, sir. Because God has shown us the way through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. God, through every action, he demonstrates uh, the power that he has, the good and the love that is within him. And so then it brings me to my second point. Not only has he shown us uh, what is good, oh man, but, but next uh, uh, I see the obligation. In, in the sixth chapter of Micah, the people had forgotten that God is a righteous God. Some, some of them thought in Micah chapter six, verses six and seven, that they could erase their sins by bringing certain gifts and making certain sacrifices unto God. They, 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 they thought they could appease him. They incorrectly assumed that, uh, that God could be bribed, that, that, right. that, that God could be bought off, that, right. that, that, that somehow God would look the other way because of what they were doing for him. Uh, somehow the people... Uh, felt that if they did more uh, uh, of some things for God, then somehow That's he would right. overlook their wrongdoing. That's right. uh, they, they, they forgot that God is a righteous God, that, right. that, that God has requirements, that God has a standard, that God uh, is real, and that That's God right. is true, and what he said in his word, he will surely do. That's right. Somebody ought to know that you can't give uh, to God what he already has. Uh, he already is the one who created everything. And, and so here they thought that they could somehow give God some things. How are you going to give? How is the, the, the creature going to give to the creator? Yeah. What he doesn't, what he already, is something he doesn't already have. God has everything. The Bible says even the cattle of a thousand hills, all the silver and gold, all of those things belong to God. Yes. People of Micah's day. They wanted to buy salvation. That's right. They wanted to uh, purchase uh, with uh, money and with material things, with earthly things. They wanted to purchase uh, forgiveness. Uh, but but they, they, they but you, I know you know this. But uh, forgiveness and salvation are not for sale. No. And, and even if they they, they were for sale, there, there's no kind of earthly material that's good enough to buy those things. Uh, it's not for sale by the almighty God. Let me tell you, God still requires us yeah. to have a right relationship That's right. with him. God was not requiring more. Uh, he was not requiring or requesting uh, more animal sacrifices. He was not asking for more rivers right. of oil. He's not, he was not even asking them to sacrifice your, your firstborn child. Right. He, but, but, but let me tell you what God is requiring. He still requires that we give him our heads. Uh, we, ought, we ought to give our minds over to him. He still requires that we give him our hearts. Uh, the, 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 the actual essential part of who we are, we ought to give it unto him. And he requires that, that we give him uh, our hands. Whatever we can do for God, we ought to be willing to do it for him. God wants us uh, more. He wants us more than the things that we have. Today, our nation is in turmoil. Our nation is in crisis. That's right. Because too many people are not concerned about the requirements that God has for, for us. Right. Since this world is wayward, since uh, countries 
are in chaos, since states are suffering, since cities uh, are in confusion all over the world, since communities uh, are in a state of confrontation, since life and living have become lawless in some places, yep. then more people ought to be asking, what does the Lord require of me? Yes, I, I like how that question ends. Uh, 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 we, we ought to be less concerned uh, uh, about others uh, until we meet the standard that God has placed before us. He, right. he, it, the question is, what does the Lord require of me? What, 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 what does he require of me? I, I like how, how it ends because let me tell you, me is a personal pronoun. That's right. And some questions are, are for the group and, and some questions are for others, but then there are some questions that you got to answer for your own self. Yeah, it's going to be a time when every one of us has to stand before God and you won't be able to get your lawyer, you won't be able to get your parents, you won't be able to get your friends or your pastor or whomever else that you might uh, have a relation with. You might not be able to get any of those. You won't be able to get any of them to speak for you. But you're going to have to speak for yourself. That's right. Yes, you're going to have to answer the question, even though you say, I don't speak so well, Brother Pastor. But let me tell you, there's going to be a time when you got to speak for your own self. Well, yeah. Oh, yes, they tell me that uh, uh, Reverend Frank, who was former pastor here at this church, used to say that every, that every tub has to sit on its own body. Yep. There's going to be a time when you're going to have to stand up uh, and speak for yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you're going to have to give the answers. And let me tell you, the, the answer to the question is an individual one. What does the Lord require of me? Yes. Yes, uh, stop worrying about everybody else uh, and take care of yourself. Sweep around your own front door before you start sweeping around somebody else's front door. Yes, every person must have that answer for himself or herself. There's no room for proxy response because God requires personal responsibility. And then it brings me to my last point right quickly. I see the stipulation. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8 lists it lists God's stipulation that I, I, I see it the way I see it. it it's one stipulation uh, that's in three parts. A lot of times uh, folks are trying to piecemeal their way to get to heaven. But let me tell you, you don't get to, to, to decide that you're going to you're going to love some and hate others. You know, you don't get to decide you're going to obey some commandments and and, or, and ignore other ones. we got to obey them all. All of what God said is important. And so here I see the, the stipulation. I see it the way the Lord has revealed it to me in three parts. If you, and in order for you to get full credit from God, we must do all three parts. Yeah. When, I, when I think about how badly some people treat others. Yeah. And I'm not only talking about uh, the situation that happened in Minneapolis, yeah. Minnesota, and some other parts in the country. Sometimes even in our own community. So, and sometimes uh, in, in our own areas, uh, sometimes on the job or sometimes even in the church, sometimes where we are, there's, there are people that are mistreated. Yes. Sir. Let me tell you, God is not pleased no. when people are mistreated. That's right. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters, I can't help but wonder uh, when, I, when I look at, at what's happening in our country. My, my, my. I, I can't help but wonder uh, not only if, uh, if we know what the Lord requires, but, but by some of the actions that have happened uh, in this country, I wonder if we know God at all. I, I wonder if this nation really knows God. I wonder if some of the people who are professing to know him, if they really know God, because if you did know him, you would do differently. Uh, there used to be a process That's right. that involved the courts and judges and, and other uh, officials before a person was executed for certain crimes. All right. And, and it was not for every crime, but there were certain crimes that a person might commit and they could be considered for the death penalty. Right. But now, the way, way, way I, I see it, the way uh, things are unfolding uh, in, in some parts of, of our country, <clears throat> some people are being executed and beaten uh, for being suspected uh, of having committed a crime. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we should not take uh, matters into our own hands. We, if we're going to do things, we ought to do them right. We ought to do them justly. We ought to do them in a way that is pleasing to the Almighty God. 
Some people are appointing themselves to be judge, jury, and executioner. But let me tell you, God is not pleased with that. Some of the most unrighteous people That's right. are some are, are those who are the most self-righteous. Oh yeah, as long as they are doing it, then they believe what they do and say is right. Uh, right and righteousness are determined by God and God alone. And it's not determined uh, by you and me. All right. Let me tell you, uh, the laws that we have need to be based upon what God has decided. Yeah, but uh, as one of the brothers said, yeah. it, uh, it seems like instead of being one nation under God, uh, we have some people in this country that uh, are putting themselves above God. That's right. Let me tell you, in order for our nation to do better All right. and to be better, and I believe that, that brighter days uh, uh, can be ahead if we only turn to God. That's right. uh, I believe that our nation will be better but uh, we got to turn to God first. Uh, what, what, what some uh, people see as greatness is displeasing to God himself. That's right. And just because there are some people that might agree with your definition of good and your definition of wonderful and your definition of awesome, let me tell you, that doesn't mean that God is pleased or is in agreement with what you have decided. That's right. This text tells us to act justly, which means that we must be fair in our dealings with others. Uh, let me tell you, wrongness needs to be corrected. Uh, crookedness yeah. needs to be straightened out. Injustice needs to be replaced with justice. But yes, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are told to love mercy, love mercy, act justly. And he says, love mercy. Some folks only believe in mercy when uh, they or their loved ones need mercy. All right. But let me tell you, each of us ought to promote mercy. Yes. Uh, each of us ought to give mercy. If you want mercy, you ought to give it. Uh, you, ought to, you ought to be willing to to, to, to have mercy on somebody else. Uh, let me tell you, you ought to want to, you ought to give the mercy, you ought to pray for the mercy uh, that, that you would want for yourself if you were in the same situation. My brothers and sisters, uh, to love mercy means that we ought to be committed to meeting the needs of others. Uh, the final stipulation is to walk humbly with God. I'm so glad that we serve a God who's willing to allow imperfect uh, creatures to walk with him. And he is the perfect God. Well, what, a, what a mighty God we yes. serve. Yes. Imperfect people being able to uh, interact with the perfect God as we walk uh, as God wants us to walk and, as, uh, and, to, and to walk where God wants us to walk. Uh, let me tell you, we must not have an arrogant and uppity, uh, inflated or snobbish attitude. All right, now. You got to realize that uh, you might be up to date. But let me tell you, there was a time when you weren't always where you are now. Ahead, you got to always remember that uh, you can be up one moment and life uh, can be like a roller coaster. Yes, right. And you can be down the next moment. Uh, you got to remember where you came from. You aren't always uh, in the condition that you're in right now. And let me tell you, and then you ought to remember what that God is the one who did it for you. Oh yeah, those people who look down on others, those who consider themselves to be better uh, than other folks, those who are too good to associate with certain people because of their race or their ethnicity or, or their, their religion or, or the class that they have in society. I want you to know that you're not walking with God. Yes. Well, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, if you got to walk with anybody, let me tell you, a good one to walk with is God. 
Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I heard the songwriter say he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. And let me tell you, it is a blessing to be able to spend time with God. But let me tell you, you got to be able to meet the requirement that God has put before us. Our nation will be great when people who are different are not disrespected. All right. We must walk humbly, yes. which means that we ought to have humility as God requires. Yes, sir. Uh, conditions in our country, conditions in our cities, in our towns, in our communities, and in our neighborhoods won't change unless and until we walk with God. Let me tell you, and let me tell you, when you walk with God, your walk is going to be a different walk. Yes. Let me tell you, when you walk with God, not only will your walk be different, but you know what? Your talk is going to be different also. Exactly. Oh, yes. Uh, your whole uh, lifestyle will be changed. Your whole being uh, will be different because uh, you're with God and because uh, God enables you to rise to a higher level. Yes, we must walk and talk so that it pleases Almighty God. Let me tell you, the world may not be pleased with what you have to say, but let me tell you, you're not uh, here to please the world. Our job is to please Almighty God. And as I bring this message to a close, let me tell you, the only way to live up to God's requirement is to have Jesus as Lord and Savior of our individual lives. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, let me tell you, without Jesus... Uh, uh, we will uh, be and do opposite of what God has already required. That's right. Oh, yes, but my brothers and sisters, uh, when you have God on your side, when, when you walk with God, when you know him for yourself, let me tell you, you'll do some things uh, that you didn't think you were able to do. You, you, you'll love uh, in a way that you weren't able to love before you knew God. You'll be yes. able to serve in ways that you, you didn't think were possible. You'll be able to, to do some great and wonderful things because God will help you to do what's right. Well, yes, my brothers and sisters, and I know somebody's wondering, Brother Pastor, tell me, how can I, I meet uh, this requirement? I, I, I realize that, that I'm not everything where, where I should be. How can I, how can I get up to the requirement that God has set for us uh, in, this, in this scripture? How, how, how can I meet the standard that God has for us in the scriptures. Well, let me tell you, you can do it because of Jesus Christ. Yes. I can tell you that Jesus died on an old rugged cross. I can tell you that, that they hung him high. They stretched him wide. I can tell you they nailed him in his hand. They nailed him in his feet. They pierced him yes. in his side. I can tell you that we can do it because he was buried in a borrowed grave. Yes, sir. Yes, he stayed in the grave all night Friday night, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early, early Sunday morning. Got up with all power in his hand. Yes, sir. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because yes, he lives, we can rise to the standard. Because of the help that we get from God. Yes, sir. We can live a life that's pleasing to him. No, we won't be perfect here yes. on this earth. Yes. But let me tell you, you can live a life that's headed uh, in the right direction. You live a life that's, that's, that's godly, a life that's pleasing to God because he's willing to help us. Yes, sir. Well, my brothers and sisters, as I come to this herd close, I want to ask you, what does the Lord require of you? Have you given it any thought? My, my, my. Let me tell you, God has a requirement. He expects us to act justly. He expects us to, to do uh, the, the right things. He yes. expects us to live in a way that's pleasing unto him. There may be one today, wherever you are, yes, sir. you can give your life to Jesus Christ. You can't change on your own. You can't do it on your own. But with God's help, you can do it. You can come by letter. You can come by Christian experience. You can come for baptism. If you don't have a church home, it's time for you to get one. Yes. Because it's getting late in the evening. Oh, yeah. And none of us knows how much time we have left. No. And what a tragedy it would be if God would call upon you and you're not ready. And you can't get ready on your own. Oh, no. You can only get ready in Jesus' name.
Is there one today? You can call our church line. <laughs> call the church number. You can send us a message on social media. You want to be a part of this church? You want to be a part of God's family? You want to be a part of another church? We'll send you to the church of Detroit. But you need to get right with God. And do it. Yeah. This is your chance. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Don't let this time pass you by. If you're not promised another Sunday, it's impossible not promised another service, you're not promised another sermon. But God is going to work it out if you just believe. We're waiting on you. Yeah. Remember this one thing while you're going through. We're waiting on you. If God delivered Daniel, guess what? He'll do the same for you, 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 you. No matter what's going on. He'll make it all Said it in his word. Oh, oh, oh. No matter what's going on, no matter what's going on, he'll make it all right. That's what he said. The invitation is ours to extend. And it's yours to accept or to reject. And as I usually say, if you end up in hell, it's nobody's fault but your own. I want to also uh, tell you that on next Saturday, uh, the Saturday before uh, the second Sunday, the second Sunday is our Lord's Supper Sunday. So next Saturday from noon until two o'clock, you can come and pick up your uh, Lord's Supper. And also we should have some, uh, some masks if you would like to have uh, a mask, we would like uh, all of the, the members of our church uh, on a first come, first serve basis. And I'm grateful to our state convention uh, and its president, Reverend Dixon, Foreign Mission Baptist Convention, and Reverend Dixon, who, who acquired the mask and they, they sent them through our local association, and uh, moderator Matthew Alfred, and they were delivered here to, uh, to our church. And so we want to issue some masks out and also the Lord's Supper next Saturday, uh, Saturday coming uh, at uh, the Saturday before the second Sunday, uh, right here at the church. If weather permitting, we'll be in the front of the church. And if not, uh, we'll be on the side. But uh, you come by and uh, pick up uh, enough for you and your household. And let's look out for one another, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Tripp to come and that he would uh, give us the, uh, the uh, closing prayer for the sick and shut in and, and, the, uh, and the benediction. And I want you to know uh, I love you and God uh, bless each and every one of you. So uh, on Thursday, Thursday, please tune in midweek, uh, Thursday at six o'clock. <clears throat> Look forward to having you with us Thursday at 6 o'clock and every Sunday uh, at 1045. God bless you.
Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for that beautiful sermon by Reverend Lazar on today. <clears throat> you know, God required that his people live just and holy. Amen. As I say all the time, the problem we are having in America, the problem is not financial, the problem is not political. The problem is not economical. The problem is spiritual. It has been and it always will be. It is spiritual because what God requires of us, we have left our first love. We have drifted so far away from God and his word, his will, and his way that instead of we are one nation under God, we put our laws above God. And that's why we are dealing with tragedy. God will not, God will not uh, tolerate sin. You may take it too lightly. We cannot do that. But we certainly thank God for Reverend Lazard and this wonderful message he gave to us on today. God requires his people to live upright and holy. We hope you've enjoyed it. Now let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, mercy, grace, and love and kindness. We thank you, dear Lord, for the word that we heard from on high on today. We thank you, dear Lord, for letting your word touch somebody's heart, stir up somebody's spirit, and give them godly wisdom, dear Lord, that they need to walk this walk of faith. So much of America has conformed to the ways of the world, dear Lord. Enlighten them, dear Father. Bring them back to the fold. Just like sheep that have went astray, bring them back to the fold. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, dear Lord, for looking upon all those who are sick and shut in in the hospital, in the old folks' home. We ask that you restore health and healing to them. We ask that you raise them up as a mighty, mighty, mighty testimony for thee. And we just thank you, dear Lord, for the word on our own today. We hope it's, it has touched somebody's heart. It has stirred up somebody's Amen. spirit. And now the moment of departure has arrived, dear Lord. We ask that you dismiss us from this place only, but never, never, never from thy presence. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, and the redeem of the Lord responded by singing, Amen.